Okay, in this problem, we're asked to sketch a region R and give an iterated integral to calculate the double integral of f of x, y over our region R. And then we're asked to evaluate our iterated integral. So we're given that our function f of x, y is the function of just x. And our region R is defined where x is between pi, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 and y is more than or equal to 1 half and less than or equal to sine of x. So first we can go ahead and so we'll start by just sketching our function y equals sine of x, since we know that we want our y values to be less than that. So that's going to be something like this. Okay, so we have our function and We want values of y less than sine of x. So that's everything underneath the curve. And we want y to be also more than 1 half. So we can just kind of draw our line y equals 1 half, and then we want our y values to be between here. So we have this area, this shaded area, above our y equals 1 half. and below our graph of y equals sine of x. So we have our y constraints satisfied. Now we want to check our x constraints and see if we need to shrink our area any further. So we have x ranges from pi over 6 and to 5 pi over 6. So when x is equal to pi over 6, we see that sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So it's at the point of intersection between the equation y equals 1 half and sine of x. And when x is equal to 5 pi over 6, we also have sine of pi, 5 pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. So those points correspond to our two points of intersection of sine of x are our first two points of intersection of positive x values. So we get so our region is still as defined before since obviously our region that we determined just based off of our, our y constraint ranges from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 for x. <coughs> Sorry. So our region R remains the same. So now we want to calculate or determine an iterated integral that calculates the integral of our function f of x, y, which is x over our region R. So if we look at our integral, or at, at our region R, we know that our x values are going to range from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. But our y values are going to range over different values. So we see that at all points between the interval pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, our function y equals 1 half 
is below our function y equals sine of x. So we can evaluate our integral from 1 half to, to sine of x. So since our function, is, or since our limits of integration are going to be in terms of x, we'll calculate dy first. So we have our integral from 1 half to sine of x. And then our x values are going to range from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. OK. So now we have our iterated integral. We're going to go ahead and evaluate that. We can do that by splitting it up into two integrals. So we'll take the first integral as the interior integral. So we're going to take the integral from 1 half to sine of x of x dy. So we have the integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. And then our integral of x dy is xy. And then our limits of integration are 1 half to sine of x. And then our integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 is with respect to x. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and evaluate our from pi or from 1 over 2 to sine of x. So we get the integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of x sine of x minus x over 2 dx. Okay, so we want to, so we know that the integral of a sum or difference is the difference of the integrals. So we can write this as The integral of x sine of x and the integral of x over 2, both from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. So we're going to use integration by parts on our first integral. So if we let u be x, then du is just dx. And if we let dv be what's left is sine x. Then v is equal to negative cosine x. And this should be sine x dx. I don't know why I wrote x. It should be minus cosine x. Okay, so we can use our integration by parts to tell us that we have minus x cosine x minus the integral of negative cosine x or plus the integral of cosine x dx. And we also need to evaluate. from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. And then we also have our integral, our second integral, which is minus the integral pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of x over 2. Integral of x over 2 dx 
is x squared over 4. So we have minus x squared over 4, evaluated from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. We can calculate the integral of cosine x dx, which is sine of x. And that's evaluated from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. So everything is evaluated from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. We can go ahead and just evaluate that. And we know that cosine of 5 pi over 6 is going to be a negative square root 3 over 2. So we have negative x cosine x is turns to positive 5 pi over 6 times square root 3 over 2. And then we're going to subtract a negative x cosine x, where x is pi over 6. So that's the same as adding x cosine x evaluated at pi over 6. So we get plus pi over 6, and cosine of pi over 6 is square root 3 over 2. And then we're going to add our sine of x, where x is 5 pi over 6. So sine of pi, 5 pi over 6 is 1 half, minus sine of pi over 6, which is 1 half. So this term goes to 0. And then minus x squared over 4, where we'll write this as x over 2 quantity squared. Just for a little bit, make it a little bit easier. So um, we have minus. Five pi over six over two is five pi over twelve squared minus pi over six over two squared minus pi over twelve squared. So we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So so we have pi over 6 times root 3 over 2. times 5 plus 1 times 6. six our 6 is cancel, so we can just write this as pi times the square root 3 over 2. So that's these two terms. And then we're going to subtract these two quantities. So we have 25 pi squared over 144 minus pi squared over 144 so we see that we have 24 pi squared over 144 on the inside
So we get that our final result is pi times the square root 3 over 2 minus 24 pi squared over 144.